This video is for entertainment purposes only. All of the information in this video was taken from the internet. I am not saying the information is fact. <laughs> I don't know the camera on his, uh, 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 fuck it. Uh. On November 29th, 2021, Broward Sheriff's Office deputies responded to Cleveland Clinic after receiving a report of a subject with a gunshot wound to the head. The victim, Trashin Y.B. Martin, was brought to the hospital by his friend named A.J. Unfortunately, Trashin Y.B. Martin succumbed to his injuries caused by the gunshot. During the investigation, A.J. provided a statement to the Broward Sheriff's Office regarding the incident. According to A.J., Trash and YB Martin had plans to meet an individual at 731 Thornridge Avenue in Davie, FL 33325. According to the account, YB was supposed to receive a credit card from the subject. A, Jade drove YB to the designated location, but they couldn't find the subject and received no response to their text messages. After waiting for about 10 to 15 minutes, A, J and YB decided to leave and headed north on the turnpike. However, the subject later messaged YB and asked them to return to the address on Thornridge Avenue. They complied and met with the subject there. A. J. parked their vehicle in the middle of the street, while Y. B. remained in the front passenger seat. The subject, described as a tall, light-skinned black male with short hair, approached on foot. He was wearing all black clothing, including a hooded sweatshirt with a picture on the front. Y. B. opened his door to speak with the subject. According to A. J. account, he was looking down at his phone while YB and the subject were engaged in conversation. A. J. couldn't provide any details about the content of the conversation, but mentioned that it didn't seem heated or argumentative. Suddenly, A. J. heard a loud pop sound and quickly turned to see that YB had been shot. A. J. immediately got out of the vehicle to locate the subject, but realized that the car was still in drive. After putting the car in park and exiting, the subject had already disappeared from sight. In a hurry, AJ drove out of the neighborhood and rushed YB to the emergency room at Cleveland Clinic. During the investigation, it was discovered that YB had been communicating with two Instagram accounts before the incident, Gleese Bobby and Lil Red Boy. The user of the Gleese Bobby account had planned the meeting, and provided YB with contact information to message Lil Red Boy. Eventually, the conversation between YB and Lil Red Boy switched to text messaging after transitioning from Instagram. YB and Lil Red Boy continued their communication via text messaging. The number they used to exchange messages was 7543077994 which was linked to a TextNow account. Through the text messages, it was confirmed that the TextNow account belonged to iCardi, and it was Jonathan who was messaging YB using iCardi's account. Furthermore, it was discovered that both Alston and Jonathan are affiliated with a well-known gang called GKB, Gangster Slash Killer Slash Blood, or g -shan. This is supported by tattoos, social media account content, and text conversations between them and other associates. Video surveillance video was obtained from the Marathon gas station, located at 5425 Lions Road, Coconut Creek, FL 33073. The video shows on 29th November 2021 at 8.55 hours. Jonathan and Alston arrive at the gas station in Jonathan and Silver Nissan Centra. They both enter the store and eventually leave the area. 
No additional people are seen entering or exiting the vehicle while they were at the business. From the gas station, they drive to the area of the homicide. This information is corroborated by Sun Pastel photos and geolocation information obtained from Jonathan's cellular device. Multiple surveillance cameras in the vicinity captured Jonathan's vehicle prior to the homicide, while Alston was caught on camera walking in the area both before and after the shooting. Although witnesses in the area were unable to positively identify the shooter, they mentioned that the individual was dressed entirely in black. It is worth noting that Alston was seen wearing all black at the gas station, while Jonathan was wearing a black tank top and light-colored denim jean. Furthermore, several homeowners in the area reported that an individual knocked on their doors after the homicide, seeking to use their internet to contact a friend. Video footage from the surveillance cameras identified Alston as the person on foot in this scenario. On November 30, 2021, a call was received from Thomas regarding this matter. A person knocked on Thomas' door at his residence located at 710 Well O Grove Terrace, Davy, FL 33325. The individual requested the internet password to call his friend for a ride. Thomas described the person as a light-skinned black male, approximately 16 years old, dressed in all black and wearing a red bandana around his neck. The person introduced himself as Red to Thomas. Thomas did not open the door but spoke to Red through the front door's peephole. He refused to provide the internet password but offered to make a call to the friend on Red's behalf. Red agreed and provided the phone number 9549451107, belonging to his friend AJ. Thomas called the number at 10.48 p.m. and spoke with the subject on the other end and provided the subject with his home address so he could pick up Red Thomas also mentioned that some of his neighbors reported the same individual knocking on their doors. Thomas had a ring camera that captured the person approaching his front door. The phone number provided by Red was confirmed to be associated with Jonathan. It is worth noting that Alston, as seen in the footage, was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt with a picture printed on the front similar to what A.J. had described in his statement to the police. On December 9, 2021, detectives from the Sunrise Police Department and other detectives from the Davie Police Department provided assistance in identifying Alston Jr. and conducting a search of his residence. One Apple iPhone was seized from Alston Jr. during this process. Alston Jr. expressed his willingness to speak with detectives regarding the investigation and agreed to be transported to the Davie Police Department for further questioning. During the search of Alston Jr., his residence, law enforcement officers discovered and confiscated several pieces of clothing. Notably, a red bandana and a blue surgical-style glove were found beneath Alston Jr., his mattress. The bandana matches the one he was observed wearing on November 29, 2021. While executing the search warrants, detectives met with Alston, who voluntarily agreed to proceed with the conversation without the presence of an attorney. Alston confirmed his acquaintance with the victim through social media and denied any involvement with the homicide before asking for an attorney. Detectives then spoke with Natalie Alston mother of Christopher Alston Jr. She was shown surveillance video footage collected during the canvas of the area and confirmed the subject in the video was, in fact, her son. The conversation was audio slash video recorded. On 10th December 2021, detectives met with Jonathan, who was being taken into custody by BSO for an unrelated case. Jonathan did not wish to speak with detectives regarding this investigation. Text message conversations were observed on the devices belonging to Jonathan and Alston. According to the conversations, it appears Alston was to meet with YB at 731 Thornridge Avenue. YB could not find Alston and left the area to head back to North Lauderdale. Jonathan was displeased with Alston and stated he folded. He also asked where Alston went when YB was waiting for him. 
Alston was able to get in touch with YB, which led AJ and YB to turning around and returning to the area. After the shooting, Jonathan states he had to switch vehicles because he was driving around too much in search of Alston. Dedio surveillance near the area of Arlington Place. The area Alston fled to and met which shows a silver Dodge Caliber vehicle driving in the area. The vehicle is seen driving south slowly on Danbury Avenue, then reversing, then heading down Arlington Place, then turning around and driving towards Shenandoah Parkway. Shenandoah Parkway is where Alston walked to after Thomas residence to wait for Jonathan according to their text conversation. It is believed the Dodge caliber seen on the video footage is Icardi's vehicle. Another text conversation of interest was located on Alston's device. This conversation was a group chat with several other subjects to include Jonathan. On 30th November 2021, Jonathan stated my son Red did not fold my son really like that in Call of Duty and can't I get a round of applause. Jonathan appears to be congratulating Alston to a group of their peers, further leading Broward Police Department to believe Alston was responsible for killing YB. After the charges were brought by the Broward Sheriffs, YB's mother took to her Instagram to share posts featuring both Alston and Jonathan, implicating them in the murder of her son. It was later discovered that Alston is a rapper who openly references his gang affiliation in his music, giving shout-outs to his gang. YB mother responded to the arrest of Alston and Jonathan, the individuals responsible for her son YB death by expressing her thoughts and considering her options regarding both the killer and his accomplice. Crazy part is they just crash dummies. Ain't nobody stupid enough to believe they just killed my son when they ain't have no pressure with him. And we know they live or used to live in Louder Hill, but it's real cool. You see what God brought forward thus far, watch how much more he bring to the front route. Added mix with Fetty Whack ass low kids ain't smoking on nothing jit. Scary ass paying for it instead. Hiding behind a fake page, make anyone tough, you looking real tough. YB was regarded as a prominent member of Snap of Ace. Rumors circulated about him making a large sum of money through Apple Pay schemes. He was known to be associated with individuals like Block Boyger, engaging in activities around Louder Hill. After YB's passing, there were false claims spread by LKB that he was set up by a female. Initially, there were suspicions within Broward County that a member of LKB might have been involved in YB's death until official information was disclosed. YB's mother believed in these speculations initially. At a balloon release event in YB's memory, she encouraged his loved ones to confront a specific LKB neighborhood. A close friend of YB, Fetty, received information from LKB about a drop location, leading to where both sides had their advantages. Following YB's death, tensions rose as people aligned themselves with different groups. Despite no LKB members being involved in YB's demise, they placed a bounty on him due to his online provocations towards a deceased LKB member known as K2, who was tragically killed in a car accident just prior to YB's passing. The incident involving K2 was believed to be a targeted attack on his passenger, LKB rapper Mup6. 
YB had a falling out with his once friend Lil Crix, partly due to disputes involving a female. Lil Crix refrains from directly mentioning YB in his music, often resorting to indirect references. Members of LKB use the term Hood Rich as a way to disrespect YB instead of mentioning his name. Following YB's demise, Shift, one posted a disrespectful video on Triller, insinuating that he was celebrating YB's death. Schiff, one shockingly admitted to finding humor in YB's unfortunate situation. This revelation sparked a heated exchange when Block Boy Ja commented on a post about Little Chris, referring to Little Chris as a female dog, not one to back down. Little Chris swiftly responded to Block Boy Ja's comment defending himself and asserting his own stance. In an unexpected turn of events, Little Chris took to his Instagram story to address not only his ongoing feud with Block Boy Ja, Little Chris even went as far as issuing a threat, hinting that he might include the fallen friends of Snap, Ave 7400 in a future song. This move added fuel to the already intense rivalry between Little Chris and his opponents. Everybody's fake as hell if nobody nothing don't happen to these motherfuckers is fake as hell. All of y'all fucking play me. Don't come on you no more. Don't play me. Fucking light fucking Lord of Hell up, Devil's Hunt. Light that shit up. Everybody. Fucking everybody shit. Send me a location. John Brown died after he was rushed to the hospital last month. Police want to know who shot him and why. Brown was driving. Freddie, yeah, Freddie got left in the hood. We turn that bitch to Freddie Drive. I told him not to go. I begged him not to go. I said, Sean, I said, don't, don't, don't be driving nobody car. Geography about this particular area. There's only one way in and one way out. Police say they got multiple calls around 11:30 this morning about two cars, one dark, one white, shooting at each other. The driver of the white BMW lost control. You left Fetty ass in the hood, man. That's the one that do the wrong stuff? Yeah, rest in shit. Life is, is too short for this stuff. Life is too short. He's 20 years old. That's my oldest baby. <laughs> <laughs> People around here, these kids say that what they saw, they need to say something. Don't just say it to me. Tell them. Tell them. Block boy jaw you to be little Chris said block boy jaw I'll rip the golds out your mama mouth little bro. All you do is pull on Jack boy D and you're still all broke living with the old mama fucks and yo dead dog B M L O L I should have beat you up in studio that one day you you was crying when you was false claiming five on blood you lucky Y B said don't do it to you. I really don't even care for Val Poa and y'all Poa Jits make another diss song I am a just diss y'all dead dogs and make everyone laugh at them especially the one that pooped on himself when he got hit in his head it came out after YB die his friend started to sleep with his baby mother and in his last sentence little Chris was speaking on Fetty. Trolling me and bro, my neck next day he ain't making him. Free look, my brother ripped that G off. Fuck you, boy, I don't need a 
friend K2 got November by December, I had to rent a tent In the month, I put a stunt Had to get a new blit, niggas dissing Now I'm trying to hunt Relocate my mama, cool I been on game, you know I'm on front Spend a nigga shit twice, every day a week Rolling off that hood, rich pipe That shit made me sleep Bitches telling me, come get by it Ain't did shit to me Ain't never did shit to bro All these niggas been a hoe And wait till they cut like fuck it, bleed he been SOS, he stepping on shit by any means. He got a shit on the neck, but Nick ain't duck this pulley. I don't even much on slide, no, it's just me and Lil Woody. Two weeks later, he died for acting like he was a killer. Lil Woody risking his life soon, up doing them killings. Lock your way, plank it, turn to a plate, think about moving flake. Drink all in his face like he and Mike, we dropping hits today. Why be asking Pat the D? I smack niggas making music. I lay down my life to snatch a life, this just ain't murder music. Not doing all that this and I need to go pop a talk. My youngest stay spinning every time they get a drop. It's a lot. We see this shit as through a car. He hop out of the duck and he running, won't make it far. That boy want to be famous, we turn his ass to a star. They say that boy would recognize his ass in the bars. He lost. YB's absence is deeply felt by his loved ones, who openly express their grief to the world.
Till I freeze up, man. Y'all know, man. Got my Z Queens with me. Y'all know, man. Come on, I'm on the right. 13-6 level, man.
town to town From London to Taiwan I've been all around the globe Trying to protect your soul Hi, my name is Terija Martin, and I'm raising this fundraiser for my little brother Trash and Martin, also known as YB. YB was born in New Jersey, but raised in North Lauderdale, FL. He was raised by a single mother of four. YB is the baby out of all of his siblings. He was set up by people who claimed to be his friends and was shot in the head. Never did he see this coming, nor was this ever something expected. A life gone far too soon, he was a son, a brother and father to be in two more months. He loves cars, music, and money. He is always the life of every party, the center of attention, and always the main attraction. He has such a unique sense of humor and was always down to be the class clown. His loyalty to his friends could never be duplicated. His name will forever live on, and he will never be forgotten. As this was not planned nor expected, we the family are asking for any contributions towards his memorial. This is never something I thought I would be making for my brother, and I don't wish it on anyone else. I just want to thank everyone for their generosity in advance. Peace YB, 